Hey, Gap Math students, uh, this is a video for uh, data probability and stats, um, objectives 124 through 129. If you don't have your packet, hit pause, go grab your packet. Um, then you'll be turning to the page that looks like this. Um, so, this is probably the first time all year where we've done this many objectives in one um, section. So there's six of them here. So that means the test is going to be 30 points, um, which you might think is bad. But I think these problems, a lot of them are going to be a little easier. You're going to be able to use a calculator to get a lot of the answers. Um, so you, out of 30 points, um, I think you're going to be able to have a chance of doing pretty well. Uh, and, you know, there's some trickier ones in there and stuff, but for the most part, you're going to be able to type things in a calculator and um, get your answer. So um, we're going to be kind of skipping around a little bit um, here, um, just kind of doing problems in a certain order. Um, what we're looking at here is kind of finding a number of ways to do things, um, which is kind of... Um, kind of the beginning into getting into probability and things like what what are your chances on like winning the lottery and um, things like that. So this is just kind of the beginning of that type of thing. Um, so the first thing we're going to um, look at, there's only one like notes that we have to take. The rest of it's just doing problems. So um, we're going to start at number four here. And we're going to look at... Um, what the first um, objective here is looking at the fundamental counting principle. Again, my writing is not great, but um, this is the only notes that we're gonna have to take. So what basically what this is, to find total possible choices or ways to combine multiple items together, multiply the number of choices of each item. So what that means is, let's say we are doing uh, Let's uh, let's do pizza, and let's say there's. You can choose between three sizes. Um, you can choose between two crusts, two types of crusts, and um, six toppings. Okay. And we want to know how many different possible pizzas could we get? You know, we can get like a large thin crust pepperoni. We could do um, a small thick crust sausage. And let's say you can only choose one of each. So it's not a two topping. Let's say it's a deal for a one topping pizza. All you would do is take the number of each item and multiply them. So you take three times two times six. So three times two is six, six times six there'd be 36 possible pizzas you could pick, okay? So that's a fundamental counting principle. Now, we'll see when you can choose more than one item and stuff, that'll get a little different, but we'll look at that in a second. But um, let's look at a couple problems here. We're gonna look at number four. Um, this gets into kind of like account numbers and passwords and stuff. It says account numbers for Northern Oil Company consist of nine digits. If the first digit cannot be a zero or one, how many account numbers are possible? So first of all, a digit is a one, just a one digit number 
Okay, so 10 is not a digit. Digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 10 possible digits if you count 0. Okay, so again, 0 through 9. Now here, this account number is made up of nine digits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's nine digits in this password. Okay, now if we want to figure out how many possible account numbers there could be, now the only restriction is the first digit cannot be a zero or a one. Okay, so don't write in the spot, we're not going to write what numbers can be there. We're going to write how many possible numbers can be there. So there's 10 possible digits, but you can't use a zero or one. So there's eight possible numbers you could have. You could have a a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Now in all the rest of these, you can have anything from zero to nine. So the second number, there's 10 possible choices. This number, 10 possible choices, 10 possible choices, 10 possible choices, and so on for each of these digits. Okay, so now we multiply all these, okay? And that's gonna be, Eight when I multiply, you could use a calculator here, but the first number is going to be eight, and then by multiples of ten, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. Now, if you needed to use a calculator for that, you could. Eight zeros. So there's eight hundred million possible account numbers. Letter D. Okay. Now again, on any of these problems, if you don't understand something, you could rewind it, watch it again, or circle it and ask me a question after, after you've taken the notes. Okay, we're going to turn the page. We're going to go number five. It's another type of these problems. I think we'll do three of these types, then we'll move on. Um, this is kind of a more traditional type of problem. It says um, builders have developed have has a development of new homes. There are three different floor plans, four exterior exterior colors and an option of either a one car or two car garage how many choices are there for your home so there's three different things you got to choose from you got you have to choose a floor plan that's one item and you choose one floor plan but there's three different floor plans you can choose okay you have to choose a color there are four different colors you could choose from. And then you have to choose a type of garage. Now be careful here. You're not gonna put one and two. That's the type of garage. So how many types of garage can you have? You can have either a one car garage or a two car garage. So there are two types of garages. Then all you do is you multiply these. So three, and you could use a calculator if you need to on this, three times, but you shouldn't need to, but three times four is 12, times two is 24 possible homes you could choose. Okay. I'm going to turn a few pages here to get the last type of these problems. We're going to go all the way to number 18. Okay. So it says, from a group of six boys and two girls, so let's say it's a small class, and that's how many people are there that day, a boy and a girl will be selected to attend a conference. How many ways can the selection be made? Okay, so the items here are a boy and a girl. Now, if it said like two boys and three girls, we'd have like two lines, boy, boy, and then girl, 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 but we don't, we have one, okay? So now we look at the number of choices for each. So for the boys, we have option of six. For the girls, there's only two girls, okay? Now we just multiply them. So there's 12 combinations we could have with six boys and two girls. That's it. Okay. 
All right. So the next type of problem are not going to be a word type of problem. They're, they're going to lead to word type of problems. We're going to look at number 15 here. Okay. Now, you might, maybe you've seen this before, maybe you haven't. It's five exclamation point. What that is, is the way you say that is the exclamation point of math. It's called a factorial. Five factorial means you, if you see an exclamation point, you start at the number in front of it, and then you keep multiplying down until you get to one. Now, you actually don't need the number one in there because anytime you multiply by one, it just gives you the rest of the numbers. Okay? So, um, definitely can use a calculator. I'm going to show you, and I'm also going to show you a shortcut with the calculator. So five times four is 20, times three is 60 times two is 120. Now again, anything times one is the same. You don't, really don't even need to write that out. So the answer is this, okay? So now I'll show you what the, the button on the calculator looks like, and I'll show you on the computer first, and then I'll just talk about it on, if you have a cell phone, uh, most calculators will have this. Um, but if you go into the search down, I don't know if it shows up but down below, Hold on here. My computer's going crazy. If you type in calculator, bottom, and then hit the calculator button, this will show up. Okay. So this right here, you see that? N exclamation point it means you type in the number first, then you just hit this, and it'll give you the answer. I think on like iPhones and stuff like that, if you, you're going to have to turn your phone sideways and then more options come up in the calculator and i think it's an x factorial and i don't I'm not sure about other phones like androids and stuff like that but um so here i would just hit five hit that there's my answer 120 okay so we'll come back to that for another problem in a second um so now we're going to go all the way back to number two And we're going to kind of combine some of these uh, things into one. So number two says to do without a calculator. I'm going to let you use a calculator, but sometimes it's almost just as fast without one. Um, so I'll show you. I'll show you it without a calculator. Now you might think that's crazy. That's going to be a big number, and it is. Um, and then I'll show you with the calculator. So without a calculator, and the more you do these, the quicker you'll be at them. But if you actually wrote out what this is. So seven factorial is this. You could include the one, you don't have to. Three factorial is three times two times one or just three times two. Four factorial is this. Now the way you can do this without a calculator is because a lot of this cancels out. Four times three times two cancels out with this four times three times two. Okay, and then three times two on the bottom. Okay, if I multiply the top, not, you might not be able to do it in your head, you might have to use a calculator or whatever, you'd get this, and then you divide that as 35, or you might have looked at this and said three times two is six, you cancel out that six and you're left with seven times five is 35. If you can't do that, no big deal, okay? What you would do, put a line here, so the answer is gonna be 35. But if you have your calculator, okay, it says seven factorial. Let's see if I can let's write this out first. So we had seven factorial three factorial, four factorial. Okay, so seven factorial, seven factorial, write that down. Okay, three factorial, you could type it in, but that's just three, three times two is six. And then four factorial, again, you could type it in, but it's, Four times three is 12 times two, but if 
it wasn't sure of that for factorial is 24. So now you'd have to do that. Now you'd take six times 24, six times 24 equals 144. Then you'd have to take your 5,040 divided by 144, and that gives you your 35. Okay, so there's two different ways. Using the calculator over here, kind of non-calculator over here. Okay, so you can see a lot of these might be a little easier than some of the other problems we've done in this session just because you get to use a calculator. Um, I'll do a couple more of those for you here quick. We're going to turn to number 11. This one maybe can use a calculator, maybe not, because it's not asking for an actual answer. It's asking you what is it simplified. So if we did this, 7 factorial, I'm going to stop with the 2. I'm not going to include the 1. Two factorials is two times one or just two. Four factorials, four times three times two. Okay, so now, now you could maybe have, you know, type seven factorial, got a number, two factorial, four factorial, but because they're not giving you actual full numbers here, they just want it simplified. Um, it's easiest to do this way. Now, the key here is you're dividing here. We have a 4, 3, and a 2. Here we have a 4, 3, and a 2. So that's going to cancel out with that. And you just write what you have left. You have a 7, a 6, times 5, times we have this other 2 here. And it's right here. Okay. So it looked like it could maybe be a hard problem, but it's actually not that tough of a problem. Okay, one more of these type, go back. I know we're turning, doing a lot of turning here. Um, we're gonna go to number, well, actually we, we're moving on from this type. So we're going to number six. So this is a different type of problem here. On the objectives, we've seen some words called permutations and combinations, okay? So it's, it's gonna, Again, be two different ways of um, figuring out like number of ways you can do things. Okay. Um, permutation is what we're going to look at here. So here it says, which is not an expression for the number of ways to arrange two items from four items when order is considered. So when we look at this, is what we're going to deal with is permu and one key here, order matters. So it'd be like if in this problem, four people are racing, how many ways could they take first and second? Okay. Now there's a few different ways of doing this. Now I'm going to show you a formula here. Okay. But you're going to end up being able to use a calculator. This is the one type of problem where you're going to have to use the formula. And again, if you're taking a test, if you do the best you can on this and then use your calculator or the website to do the other ones, which I'll show you here in a second. But there's a formula for this. We call it an MPR or NPIR. And it's going to be... n factorial over n minus r factorial. Now, another key here is n is your total number. r is the number picked or chosen. Okay, so in this problem, we would have four pick two. We're having four people do, or there's four items, we have to arrange, now that's a key word, arrange means there's an order, two of them, okay? 
Now, again, I'm going to show you how to use a calculator or a website to do these problems in a second, but here they just want to know how to set it up. So the top would be 4 factorial, bottom n minus r means 4 minus 2 factorial. Now we're going to look at this every step and see. They want an answer, say, which is not an expression to, to solve this. Well, right here, this shows up here. So that's yes. Okay, we want to find the one that's a no. Now we're going to keep doing our steps here. So this is 4 factorial. 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 factorial. That doesn't show up here. Okay. So this is 4 times 3 times 2. This is just 2 times 1 or just 2. Okay, that's not over there. The 2 and this 2 cancel out. So it leaves us with 4 times 3. That's right here. So this is yes. Now there's one right at the beginning I, we didn't catch right away. The way you write this is one of the choices. 4 pick 2. That's what I wrote right here. So this is a yes. This is not equal what we're doing. So this is actually our answer. Now, again, if that one was kind of difficult to follow and understand, that it, that's understandable. Do your best. Maybe watch it again. You know, see if you can figure out when you get to the test. And there's another one on here, I think, like that. Okay, but do your best. Um, now we're going to do one where you, I'm going to show you a website to use where you can do this. So let's look at number nine here. Okay. This is, it just says evaluate a permutation of 5, 4, which is the same as saying 5, pick 4. Okay. Now, without a calculator, I'll show you this. And we're using this formula right up here, n factorial, n minus r factorial. So n is 5, n minus r is 5 minus 4. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. 5 minus 4 is 1. And then 1 factorial is just 1. So then you have to multiply all these in the top. 5 times 4 is 20. Times 3 is 60. Times 2 is 120. So that's our answer. Now I'm going to show you, if you just put it like this, I'm going to show you a website to go to where you can just find your answer. Okay, then you're not going to have to do all this work for other problems like this. Okay. So, um, if you go to Google, and you're going to type in, and you might need to pause this or write this down on your paper so you know to go to it later. You're going to search for permutation formula calculator. The first one that shows up should be at calculatorsoup.com, and it's going to be permutation calculator. Okay, you're going to click on that. Okay, so now all you do is you can type in your N, which in this problem was five, type in your R, which for this problem was four, hit calculate. There's your answer 120. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more like that right now, but, um, you know, if, if N was 7 and R was 3, you just type them in. So if you had seven people running a race and you needed to figure out how many ways could they take first, second, and third, it'd be 210 different ways. Okay, so any problem that you see when you're going through here and not this, we're going to look at that in a second. So this one, that's what you, you could just type those numbers in, 6 for N, 2 for R, and you're going to find your answer. Okay. All right. Next one we're going to look at. Um, this is a problem just kind of like we did two problems ago, which is not an expression for the number of ways three items can be selected from six items when order is not considered. So this would be like 
there's six people running a race. How many ways could three people finish in the top three, but it doesn't matter if it's first, second, and third. Okay, or um, if we're having, if we're gonna order a pizza and there's six different things we can put on there and we wanna put three on there. How many different ways could we put three toppings on there? Because it doesn't matter if you put sausage and pepperoni um, and then anchovies, okay? The order doesn't matter the way you put it on there. So this one gets a little more complicated. And again, you're not always gonna have to do this. There's maybe like one problem that'll show up on the test where you're not gonna be able to use your calculator. But first of all, this is called, when the order doesn't matter, it's called a combination. Does not matter. Okay, so the formula for this, it's NCR or N choose R. It's very similar, but there's one extra thing. We still have the N factorial on the top. We do have the R factorial. So right now this looks, this is an extra thing. The one that makes it look like the permutation. We still have the N factorial on top. We do have the N minus R factorial on the bottom. That's like the permutation. And then we have an extra R factorial. So for this problem, we would set this up as six, choose three, okay? Now we're gonna fill this in, six factorial. R factorial is three, and then N minus R factorial. Okay, so let's do the one little simplification first. Six minus three is three. It's okay, so right here, this shows up here, so that's yes. Okay, if I keep going, this is six times five times four times three times two. This is three times two right here. And this factorial is three times two. So we can cancel out one of these sets of three times two and we're left with six times five times four. And we're left with three times two on the bottom, which that's right here. So this is yes. And we're looking for the one that is not. So now it's between these two. Now this one's kind of confusing, but this means permutation of six and three. And remember this over this is a permutation. Now, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry about it too much. And then we have the extra R factorial on the bottom. So this is actually true. But if you didn't if you didn't notice that, if that's hard to understand, look at this. Now I wrote six choose three. The N is always first. This is always gonna be the bigger number. They could be the same, but this number will never be bigger than this. And that's what it has here. So this is the no, that does not work. Okay. Now again, we are gonna be able to, I'll show you the website for this before we do a problem. So if you go, so now in this one, I had Googled permutation formula calculator. Now I'm gonna Google combination formula calculator. Okay, first one that comes up is a calculator soup. Click on that. Okay, we're gonna come back to this in a second. So let's go to our problems. We're gonna go all the way back to number one. Okay, so this says H choose, choose three. They could also have wrote this like this. So either one of these would mean um, you're gonna use this formula. Now, again, I could do this and. I guess you don't even have to write this one down. This whole, I'm gonna show you what it would look like. So the combination is this. So we'd have eight factorial, three factorial, N minus R, eight minus three is five factorial. So I'm just showing you what you would have to do if you didn't have a calculator or didn't have a calculator with a factorial or a combination button on it. 
and it's, you might think there's no way I could do this without. You actually can. Five times four times three times two would cancel out this five times four times three times two. So this top part, now this might be the hardest part, eight times seven is 56 times six is, I've already done this, so that's 336. That would be the hardest part. And then three times two is six. You divide, your answer is 56. Now, I don't expect you to do that. Okay, we have eight and eight choose three. So you go back to the website that I showed you. We have eight, choose three. There's our answer, 56, and even shows the math of it. Okay, so we go back, and it was 56. All right, so we're almost done here. We're just gonna go through now, the last two objectives are word problems. So we're just gonna go through some word problems. The biggest thing with the word problems is just understanding what you're doing. Are you, is it going to be a permutation? Is it going to be a combination? Okay, so we're going to go to problem number 10 first. Okay, so it says you own nine cassettes. You guys might not even know what cassettes are, but um, and you're taking seven on vacation. So this was print, printed a while ago. How many ways can you choose seven cassettes from the total group? Okay, so the first thing you got to know is if you're just taking, it's not asking you what order you're, you're listening to them. So here, order does not matter. Okay, so that's going to be a combination. So we're going to do nine, choose seven. We have nine cassettes. For some reason, maybe you have a, a holder that can hold seven of them. And so you can only take seven. So again, all you're going to do, some of you might have calculators that have this on there, and you could definitely um, use that if you know how to do that. But it's nine choose seven. So make sure you're on the combinations one. So we're going nine choose seven. Hit calculate. And here's our answer. There would be 36 different combinations of cassette tapes we could do. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go to the next problem. Now I'm not doing these in order of combinations of permutations. We have to read the problem and figure it out. Okay, 17. This is kind of a weird one. It's how many different ways can you arrange five books on a shelf? So arrange, means order matters, you're arranging them. So it's gonna be a permutation, okay? Now, what's weird here is it only says we have, doesn't say how many books we actually have. We Maybe we just have five and we have to arrange five. So this is weird, but you would do this. And it's five, pick five, so you go back I'll make sure you're on your permutations calculator. Five, and we have to order five of them. And the answer right here, 120. Okay, now there is another way. Sometimes you can do permutations kind of visually or by hand using the fundamental counting principle. So what I mean here is we don't necessarily have to do this. We have five books or five spots, okay, we have five books to choose from. So in the first spot, there's five books I can pick. Now I've picked one, so that leaves me four books I can pick for the next one. Now I have picked two books. That leaves me three books for this spot, which would leave me two books for this spot. Now I only have one book left. Now if I multiply these, five times four is 20, times three is 60, times two, is 120. So that's another way you could do that one. Okay, we're almost done here. We're going to look at number 22. Okay, 11 people are entered in a race. If there are no ties, how many ways can the first two places come out? Okay, so again, there's 
if you're racing, there's a difference between first and second. It's placing matters. So the order matters for this. Okay. So there are 11 people in the race. We have to pick two of them to finish first and second. Okay, so again, you go here, 11 people total. We need to pick two to finish in first and second. 110 different ways that we get first and second place. Now, again, like I said, sometimes it's almost easier not to do that depending on how many numbers you have. If you have a lot of numbers, it might be easier to do this. But here, we're just wondering about first and second place. Not that many people to worry about. Order matters. There's 11 people running. 11 possible people could finish first. After someone finishes first, there's only 10 people left running. So 10 people could finish second. 11 times 10 is 110. Okay. Two problems left. They're both on this page. We're going to go to 25. The college has six instructors qualified to teach a special computer lab course, which, requ which requires two instructors to be present. How many different pairs of teachers could there be? So there's six teachers that could do it, and there needs to be two there. Okay. So first you got to figure out, does order matter? And it just says two have to be there. So it'd be like saying, it wouldn't matter if me and Mike are there or Mike and I are there. It's just the two of us. It doesn't matter who's there first, second, whatever. So order does not matter here. So that'd be a combination. So you'd have, there's six to choose from. You're gonna choose two. So make sure you go to the combination calculator. You have six to choose from. You are going to choose two. And there's 15 different ways. Okay. And the last problem, I chose this last because it's just a little more complicated. Okay. It's kind of like two problems in one, okay? It says a panel of judges is to consist of two women and five men, okay? A list of potential judges includes four women and eight men. How many different panels could be created? So there's four total women you can choose from, eight total men. Now, maybe don't even write this down, but problem from the very beginning. If we only had to choose one of each, we have, for women, we'd have four people to choose from. For men, we'd have eight. And we'd say there's 32 choices. Okay, if we, if we just picked one of each. Okay, but we're not picking one of each. We have to pick two women. And we have to pick five men. Okay, and then but there's more than that to choose from. So we're gonna do this as two different options. So out of the women, we have four women to choose from, and we need to choose two. Okay, here order does not matter. Okay, then for the men, we have to choose five men, and there's a total of eight. So we have eight, choose five. Now what happens is however many people we get choices here, we can combine them with however many choices we get here, back and forth, so we end up multiplying that, okay? So if we do four, choose two. So again, we gotta go here. Let's change this to four. We have our two here, four, choose two. That gives us six possible ways to choose the women. Now for each of those ways, we can combine it with the ways to choose the men. 
We have eight men, we have to choose five. So eight, choose five. There's 56 different ways to choose the men. So for each of those six ways we can choose the women, there's 56 different ways we can choose the men. So we multiply that, and that gives us 336. Again, if that's kind of hard problem, just do the, when you get the test, do the best you can at matching it up with this problem. Um, and there's plenty of other problems that should go easy here. So you know, do the best you can on a problem like this and make sure you get the other ones correct, okay? Um, so let's take a look here. I'll circle the ones we did. And again, the reason for doing this is you can see which ones we did and you can go to these problems for help. So we did four, five, 18. So those are the fundamental counting principles one we did. We did two, we did 11, we did 15. Those are the factorial ones we did. Permutations, we did six and nine. Combinations, we did one and 13. And the word problem ones, we did 17, 22, 10, 23, 25. Okay. So again, how that's helpful is like if you were doing 28 and you didn't know how to do it, you're not getting the right answer, that's from the permutation section. Well, we did six and nine, so take a look at those two. Um, you know, same down here. If you're doing 26, you can't get it, look at 22 or 17. Okay. There was a couple quick little... Uh, Questions, just hints I want to give. Make sure you notice on a problem like this, if it says you and four friends, that means five people. Okay, so that's a little hint there. Um, and then problems like, you know, this, you just have to figure out what six factor is, what five factor is, and divide it. Okay. All right. So kind of a lot there, but a lot of them should be easy with a calculator or the website. Um, so, you know, if you need help using that stuff, let me know. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Just make sure you get this all copied down. Send me pictures, get those points.